Yeah. All good. Sound? Can you hear me? Hello, one, two, three, four. Understand. Is this okay? You can hear me? Testing, testing. Testing, one, two, three. Uh-huh. What shall I say? When we started Vedika, it was really about finding a way for women to live a life of dignity. And when we contemplated dignity, it felt like dignity and dependence don't go hand in hand. And when we thought about it a little more, it felt like financial independence makes everything else a wee bit easier. And the only way I knew on how to make women financially independent was to get them ready to work. I was also quite acutely conscious that women were not making into top MBA programs in the proportion that they should be. And I fundamentally could not understand uh, why that should be. And so I felt that there was a chance to maybe change that equation. And why not get rid of any biases completely rather than trying to correct? Why not just have a program which has only women? Because most business schools, the gender ratio was so skewed in favor of men if you are an undergrad woman student, you kind of assume that it's meant for men. You know how it is. It's like it's a system that propagates itself. We're seeing a declining trend of women participation in the workforce, even in urban India. And, and that's shocking because if you were to just intellectually think about it, and if nobody has consumed that data and you just ask them, hey, what do you think in the last decade has the women part- participation in the workforce increased or not? I think every well-meaning individual will say, it's increased, but it's not. It's almost declined by 50%. And anecdotally, I'll tell you that um, in India, whatever the problem in the household, the response is the woman just take a break. Everything that's good about women is, you know, she always puts others first. She's always there. Not being in your own story is what you're revered for. We are teaching our young women to be a part of their own story. Uh, I talk to women in colleges and colleges for women from Wellesley to Lady Sri Ram and realize that actually there was a very special environment which created a safe space for women to really explore themselves and build a strong core of confidence. So once that happened, I was really convinced that this uh, idea of doing a postgraduate women's only MBA is very unique. I feel it was an idea whose time had come. I feel it represented potentiality beyond a cloistered space for women. I believe it was apposite at this point of time to think about a professional space that trains women for the challenges of the 24th century, the multitude of new possibilities and challenges. To do something different, we felt we needed to combine stuff. You know, learning one thing at a time was just not good enough. So, of course, the core, which is management practice, but supported by liberal arts, communication and quantitative skills, and finally, everything that women need to do to succeed in the workplace, which is what we call our personal growth track. Of course, I was very intimately involved in setting up ISB, which is essentially an MBA program. But having set up Ashoka, I felt that the curriculum, the teaching, learning of the MBA program needs to change with the times and involve and and imbibe a lot more of the elements of liberal arts and the humanities and social sciences. And of course, I'd also been thinking about more of leadership uh, subjects and leadership development being part of an MBA. I'd never had a chance to put that all together. So I was looking for an opportunity to do that. I think uh, adding liberal arts to management, look, it's a no-brainer in my mind. I think it's a great idea to bring it. It hasn't been how traditional management thought has evolved. Um, But, you know, as we can see, um, traditional management thought has, uh, you know, has its limitations. What I loved about what Vedika was doing was this sort of targeting uh, and shaping this specifically for women. The one thing which they emphasize on and I think is super critical is financial independence. I think it's very easy to say, you know, you, you, you know, it doesn't matter. It's your choice. Nobody tells that to a boy. Nobody. 
I know of ever says that to a young man, 17 years old, that it's okay, don't run, it's okay, it's fine, chill, right? Uh, but people say that all the time to girls and women, and I think that needs to stop. Well, it's not just about giving women access to management schools, because women did have limited, albeit, access to the best schools of management in the country. It was about what management schools should be about. And it's about bringing a different sensibility, I would say an engendered sensibility, to defining the contours of what a good management school must offer students. But you know, the crux of these programs for me personally has always been faculty. So even though we had a small class of only 30 odd scholars in the first year, we really made sure that every classroom experience that they had was just stellar quality. Uh, and that really makes all the difference. That's really the challenge of setting up these programs. So mentoring, I think, is an extremely important thing. It is underrated and it is often misunderstood. I think we do it right here. And I think, again, because of Anuradha's experience with the shadow program, uh, which she did with the United State State Department and so on, that the two ideas of mentoring and shadow really clicked. People told me I was nuts. They said ISB gets one day to follow a CEO. And you think women are going to give you one month? We have every year had more mentors than students. The desire for people to give forward is just fascinating. One of the most important things that you learn from shadow mentoring is the ability to take risks. Because you can't succeed in today's world unless you're willing to experiment and take risks. And one thing that the Vedika program and curriculum teaches the young ladies is to be ready to move out of your comfort zone. You're now getting to witness the future you. And you're going to see how she is taking a call while juggling work and life and everything that she wishes to with the same level of ambition and aspiration that anyone ought to have and should have. And I feel that that one month intervention is, I know of scholars who've come back changed. Changed. I think there are two or three things that stand out. I think the first thing is, we teach our girls not to be in a race with anybody else. It's a very non-comparative way to be in the world. Uh, not with men, not with each other. So our credo is being my better self every day. You're in competition with your previous self. Just get better at that and that's the way to be. If they can be the best in what they want to be, they can be the best version of themselves without falling into the rat race. But yet, I think constantly understand where society is evolving, where women are feeling challenged, where they need the help, and continuing to be different, not for the sake of it, but because it's the right thing to do. And in many instances, I've seen these, these same women at the end of the 18 months, I mean, completely different, completely different people. They are more confident, they are more, uh, you know, fearless, more courage. I mean, I'm sure nothing has changed in their background back home. But I think their determination and their self-belief that they can fight it is definitely a transformative experience. And that's so, so, so sort of heartwarming. There are many, many moments where uh, there is a not a temptation, but there, but uh, quitting, slowing down, um, stepping out feels like an available option. Um, I'm I'm vehemently against it. I think there are there are several good reasons to quit various things at various times in life, but I don't want to normalize that before we actually normalize not quitting. Also, I think it's an important message, and it comes back again to your. Uh, financial independence. So if girls who go, young girls who go through the Vedika program, even if after a few years they get married and they want to take a break, they take a break with the confidence that they will come back. 
I get asked a lot what would look like success for Vedika. And I think it's when women don't quit. You know, dropout rates right now, I mean, I went to LSR and only 15% of my class of economics honors is in the workforce in a formal way. And I feel like it should definitely reverse, if not be even much lower. So if we have a dropout rate from the Vedika cadres that is less than 10%, that they have break-free careers, that's what success would look like. I think this can have a profound impact on the workforce. They are kind of different. They are quite a power unto themselves. They certainly go toe-to-toe with any top MBA program, but then they bring that extra bit, which is this commitment to uh, furthering the, the gender diversity and balance at the workplace. I think as the number of Vedika scholars gets critical mass, some of this change is going to start happening. And as, as these professionals start to get embedded in the workplace, they start to um, develop a voice of their own in their organizations and ideally beyond their organizations, um, just use that voice to drive, to drive the message, to create, you know, be role models, not just for incoming Vedika scholars, but for other women in the workplace, create role models, not just out of women, but out of men as well. What's going to happen in my opinion, or what could happen in the certain case of Vedika is, Vedika recognizes that one Vedika is not enough, and it certainly isn't. So you need to have a hub and spoke model where somehow the entire ethos of Vedika's vision gets imparted in a way that the hub controls it or decides it or narrates it and then the spoke just goes ahead and delivers that. So long as it remains a work in progress and never becomes sort of, uh, shall I say, feels that we've arrived. So long as it constantly raises questions about where we are headed. Because, you know, tomorrow's questions will be different. Today's answers will not respond to tomorrow's questions. But to be alive to the moment continuously, to be self-reflexive, this is the biggest challenge. I feel like it's a really interesting social experiment. I think what we started has turned out to be this fascinating lab, which is creating a cadre of women that are going to change the way the world is, the way women are in the world, and the way men are in the world. I think it's really about a different balance a different construct for everything. 10 years of Vedika, 10 years of empowering women in the workplace. Hashtag, we can be anything. Hashtag, don't quit.